Scott Wimberly with Bad Tech Systems here to show you how to replace the filament on the Rebolim socket system. While this isn't an everyday occurrence, it is something people should be prepared to do as part of continual maintenance. Included with every Rebolim system is an additional filament replacement kit. Inside of this filament replacement kit is the filament, the threading tool, and the multi-purpose Torx tool. Uh, so with that, to get started, let's go ahead and unwind the uh, filament threading tool. Uh, the filament threading tool is a piece of uh, light gauge cable. Um, one end of the cable has been stretched open uh, to form an eye. Uh, you can see right here uh, the cable end in my right hand has been stretched open to form some of, of an eye. It's kind of tight, so if you take the Torx bit here and you slide it inside of the eye and move it all the way to the tapered section of the shank, it takes a little bit of fiddling to do, but you can. Once you get it onto the tapered section of the shank, you give it a little bit of a, a twist and a pull, and that effectively will stretch that eye open uh, to make it a little bit easier to get the filament into. Uh, with the filament, we'll go ahead and pop the Torx tool out of the way here and we'll put the filament into the threading tool. Uh, always give yourself a good inch and a half to two inch of, of tag. Um, that'll help make sure that as you're threading the uh, limb up, it doesn't pull loose. Um, so on the existing item, we first got to unlock the dial from the housing. Uh, the, the dial has an outer knob, and an inner lock ring that I have my fingers on. Inner lock ring, outer dial. Uh, we're going to take the Torx tool, we're going to push it into the unlocking hole, push in, and we're going to rotate clockwise. Clockwise, it'll get, the lock ring will give a little bit of a turn, and then the dial will come right out. Um, the, uh, the push tool pushes these little locking tabs uh, out of the way, which is what allows it to unlock. Uh, so, here marked in green on, on, the, on the dial section uh, are the holes that we're going to be using to anchor the filament uh, to the center section of the dial. Um, there's uh, holes, two holes in the face and two holes in the side. We're going to take the threading tool and we're going to start by pushing in through one of the holes in the face to out one of the holes in the sides. It can be a little hard to do, so if you bend the cable and give it a little bit of a pre-bend, kind of like we're doing here, take that pre-bend and you slide it in the hole, move it around just a little bit, you can pretty easily get it to come out the hole in the side. Now with that, we're going to just go ahead and pull the, the length of filament through the dial. Um, uh, go ahead and pull it all the way until we get to the end. And uh, once we get out here to the end, uh, we'll go ahead and do our, our knot to anchor this down. Uh, the knot that we are utilizing for this is a double overhand stopper knot. So, so we fold, fold the tag in over on itself, over the line. We wrap around the line one time pull it through the hole, and we wrap around the line one more time. So there's one time, and we go over the second time. Okay, now we slowly draw this knot up so that it, it uh, gets drawn down nice and even and doesn't, doesn't bunch up or do anything weird. So we got that where we want it, pull it slightly snug, and we're going to pull and what we're going to want to do is we want to get this knot completely down inside of the hole here in the face of the dial. Um, so you pull it a little bit and, and if it looks like it gets hung up we take our multi-purpose Torx tool here and kind of help uh, make sure it's not stuck on the sides and can use it to help push it down a little bit in the middle. So we just pull on a little bit more, uh, use the Torx tool a little bit more on the edge here push it down some okay because what we need here is a very flat surface I can't have anything sticking up or extending past uh, this part of the face of the dial uh, because uh, the, the cartridge uh, spins on that surface 
So now that we've got it all down and, and flush, we're, we're going to, well, just a little bit more. And pull it to make sure. So, there. That definitely went down. So now this little tag in here, we're going to have to cut away. Uh, for the video, I'm just going to cut it away with a knife. Uh, you, can, you can do this with a, a regular sharp blade, uh, or if you have the opportunity, a hot knife uh, does an even better job. A uh, uh, hot knife, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just take a, a blowtorch and heat up the blade uh, to where it's, it's good and red and hot, and it allows us to cut this super, super tough filament uh, very cleanly and very easily. But this regular utility knife uh, does the job just fine. Um, so we just got to be sure that we're cutting it off nice and smooth. So nice and smooth, nice and flush. So we've got our filament anchored to one end of the reel. We've got our threading tool anchored to the other end of the filament. And we're going to start lacing up our prosthetic job. So we'll push the filament through the cable pathways um, that exist in the limb. For the sake of demonstration, we did not use a complete limb here. We just used a door. Uh, but if your limb had two, three panels, four, you would just run, run the cabling all the way through the channel, start to finish the way we were doing there until you've gotten all the way completely done with it and you bring it back to the housing as the, the, the final part of its run. Once it comes back into the housing, um, you're going to uh, now feed the filament in from the side of the dial out through the face. Um, this, this way uh, it'll match what's going on on the other side and allow the cable to wind properly once reassembled. So we push it in, in through the side and it'll come out through the face. Do that little bit of the bend. Uh, probably going to need a little bit more bend. But uh, do that little bit of a bend to help it pop through. And don't be scared here. There's a threading tool with every kit. So we do that a little bit and we'll push it, and there it is, comes right through. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish pulling our excess filament uh, through the dial. Now that we've got the excess filament pulled through the dial, we're going to pull all of the filament good and snug. So with our prosthetic, we'll get all of the windows in position. We'll pull our, our lines good and snug, and we're going to want to have about four to... Uh, six inches of extra line uh, before we tie or knot. Uh, when we go to tie or knot, it's the same knot as we used before. It's the double overhand stopper. So we cross the line, go around it once, go around it twice, and dress the knot down nice and nice and snug. Uh, try to make sure you get it nice and even without everything all rolled over. So we get that pulled down. And then we do the same process as we did before. We, we pull the knot back to the face of the dial, and then we try to get it down into that hole. So we're taking our Torx tool, pack it in just a little bit here, and a little bit over here. Give it a tug, almost there. Maybe just a little bit more. So just enough to get it down flush. So push it right there, right there. So now we've got the line down flush where we wanted it. We take our knife, go ahead and cut away that remaining tag end, um, which it's tough fiber, so you just got to work at it a little bit. If you do one side and then kind of move it over and do the other, uh, it seems to to work pretty well. So keep cutting. Make sure that you you've got it all flush and, and cleaned up. So go ahead and get that loose. Uh, now that that's loose, make sure that the, the end is clear, nice and flush. What we're going to do is we're now going to put the dial into the housing. So we pull our window away from the prosthesis, which will pull all of our excess filament uh, back towards the limb and it'll bring the dial closer to the housing. So we bring the dial back as close as we can get it to the housing. We keep our lines straight so we can see what's going on with them because we've got to get it all to lay in there just right. 
So we pull it back, pull it back. We get the four little locking tabs lined up with the slots. So we have to get the slots lined up, make sure that our filament's not binding, and we press in. Once we press this in, we're going to rotate the locking ring, which is the inner ring. We're going to rotate that clockwise. Excuse me, counterclockwise. Uh, and then we'll check the function. Uh, with this, always be sure to check the function. Uh, some, sometimes it feels like the lock ring may have locked, uh, when in fact it didn't, uh, such as sit here and work at it a little bit and see it, it's not actually locked down. If you lock it down with a tool, it won't come unlocked. So we put that back on, twist it counterclockwise to lock it, check it again to make sure it is indeed locked, and you're ready to go.